Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we continue our alternate win condition week with Happily Ever After, a 3 mana enchantment. When it enters, each player gains 5 life and draws a card, so it is symmetrical. And then we need to meet 3 different conditions to win the game with it. At the beginning of our upkeep, if there are 5 colors among permanents we control, there are 6 or more card types among permanents we control and or cards in our graveyard, and our life total is greater than or equal to our starting life total, we win the game. So to synergize with Happily Ever After, we're also playing two copies of Plain White Celebration. A 7 mana sorcery, we get to choose 4 modes, and we can choose the same mode more than once, between making a 2-2 citizen token that's all colors. So having a citizen that's all 5 colors means we already meet the condition of controlling 5 different colors among our permanents, so that's great with Happily Ever After. Then we could also choose to return a permanent card from our graveyard to our hand, which can be great if we happen to mill some of our key cards, including Happily Ever After. Then we can also proliferate, which is great with our planeswalkers to maybe set up an ultimate. And then we can also gain 4 life, so sometimes we'll just make a citizen and then gain 12 life to make sure we get back up to 20 to win the game with Happily Ever After. Sometimes we'll kind of mix and match, maybe make several citizen tokens if we suspect our opponent's going to remove one of them. We can also get back a bunch of permanents from our graveyard, which can generate a ton of card advantage too. And then to tie everything together, we're also playing four copies of Atraxa Grand Unifier, which makes a lot of sense in a deck that's trying to ramp into a plain white celebration anyways, and that needs to have a lot of different card types for Happily Ever After, as Atraxa will get to take a look at the top 10 cards of our library when it enters, and then for each card type we can put one of those cards into our hand, so we can often find at least five cards in the top 10 to put into our hand with Atraxa, and then Atraxa can also help us find both Happily Ever After and plain white celebration, maybe some of our planeswalkers like Tamiyo, which can also keep plussing to find some of our missing pieces, or use a minus 3 ability to get cards back from our graveyard. And then, of course, we can also start gaining life with Atraxa as a huge 7-7 Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, and Life Link to make sure we get back up to 20 life to win the game. And then we also have four copies of Nissa, who shakes the world, including a ton of forests in our mana base. Even our dual lands and tri lands have the forest subtype, so they can make double the amount of mana with Nissa out. And then Nissa can also turn lands into 3 3 creatures, so perfect for ramping into Atraxa and Plain White Celebration. And speaking of Celebration alongside Nissa, we can use the Proliferate mode a few times to not only put extra counters on our lands, but also maybe set up the minus 8 ultimate, giving us an emblem saying that lands we control are indestructible, and we can search our library for any number of forest cards and put them on the battlefield tapped, and that can usually find all the missing lands in our deck, so we can only draw spells from now on. And then we also have some removal, including three copies of Portable Hole as the only artifact in our deck to make sure we have some cheap interaction. Then we also have four copies of a Leyline Binding, which I put in a two-drop slot since we can often give it a four mana discount if we control those four basic land types. Then a bit of a ramp with Growth Spiral at two mana, and three copies of Cultivate, which can find our various basic lands as well. And then one copy of In Search of Greatness, which was a request by one of my Patreon supporters, and it actually synergizes quite nicely in a deck that's playing both Leyline Binding and Atraxa, since if we have a Leyline Binding in play, now all of a sudden we can put an Atraxa in play from our hand for free, and otherwise it still lets us scry one every turn. And then at 3 mana, of course, our Happily Ever After. And then our Sweeper of Choice is Extinction Event, choosing Odd or Even, and then exile each creature with mana value of the chosen quality. So especially effective against a Green Devotion strategy, where the opponent has a lot of oddly costed creatures that have effects when they die that we can prevent by exiling their creatures instead. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, a lot of forests, including the Zagoth Triome and Sparrow's Headquarters. And the Headquarters especially is great alongside Nyssa, since we can untap it, make a green and a white, which then can cast a 2-mana Leyline Binding at instant speed in the opponent's turn, so that can potentially catch them off guard, making both blue and green with Nyssa to cast a Gross Spiral, also a classic. So for Breeding Pool, 2 Temple Garden can also do the same trick with Nyssa and Leyline Binding, 2 Overgrown Tomb, and then a Godless Shrine, one of the few non-forest cards in the deck, and then four forests, one swamp, one island, and one plains to search up with Cultivate. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, our hands not amazing, but if Portable Hole is good in a matchup it could be okay. So we'll lead with Headquarters, and then Search of Greatness wants to find a bit of ramp or just hit our land drops for Nyssa. Might be up against a mill deck. Can at least exile an early crab. 
Secret Keeper. No, never mind, it's a self mill deck. Creeping Chill drains for three. There's a Haunted Dead in the graveyard already. Okay, so let's search for greatness. And a Founding we can also exile with Portable Hole. But he's gonna cast a spell for free. Gaze. All right. They didn't mill anything too scary. And then we can put a portable hole in play for free as well here. I play over after we can play. If we draw into a Tamiyo, we could play that for free next turn, which would be pretty sweet. Found another one. So in terms of card types, we still need a few. Another founding. We'll meet the same fate as uh, the first one. They did mill Price Amalgam and Silver Smoke Ghoul. Leyline Binding. Do we want to keep that? Could enable a free Atraxa with Surge, but of course we don't have an Atraxa yet. So probably bottom it. Well, there's Atraxa. Nissa can still set up Atraxa on the following turn, so no big deal. So we Portable Hole instead of Happily Ever After, I guess. Even though this can make it more likely that I hit my Land Drop for next turn. Which is also pretty important. If our opponent gets to the final chapter, they could village rights to draw to. It's not the end of the world. So yeah, let's just uh, play another one. Okay. And then I will be able to play Nissa next turn and still Portable Hole afterwards. And that sets up Atraxa to hopefully find a Plain White Celebration. Found an Narcomiba, which will get back Price Amalgam end of turn as well. And there's a Village Rites, maybe sacking Secret Keeper. Okay. Ponon gets Amalgam back end of turn, and hopefully that's it. There's another gaze. Could be dangerous. Alright, nothing too bad. Okay, and this on top we probably don't need anymore. And then now I could grow spiral instead of portable hole the Narcomiba. Although I don't know if we'll find many better targets than Narcomiba, to be honest. So maybe it's fine to just uh, portable hole after attacking for three. And then if Nissa takes a bit of damage of Prize Amalgam, that's fine. Behold, nature's true power. Okay. Pass it back. Put on flashing back a gaze. But now it feels like we're in a pretty good spot. If we get to cast an Atraxa, get a huge mana advantage. Should be able to overpower a bunch of three-powered creatures on the ground. Creeping Chill will get back Silver Smote Ghoul end of turn. There's one in the graveyard so far. If they have more in hand, Haunted Dead can also discard them. Okay, Trium to the bottom. And picked up a forest. So yeah, time to play Atraxa. Could have tried to attack first, but you never know. There may be some shenanigans afoot. So Binding will be our enchantment. Time you to dig for plane wide. Cultivate is our sorcery. And then we'll grab an untapped land. Forest should be fine. A bit light on white mana perhaps. I could see Godless Shrine being better. And then I can still play Tamiyo. 
to keep digging here. I am Tamiya. It is an honor to meet you. To the library. Plain white celebration. Atraxa and extinction event in the graveyard, both useful. And then we'll untap the uh, breeding pool so we can cast a growth spiral still. Rise, my elemental okay. Friend. Opponent is going to discard Haunted Dead end of turn. Discarding double Price Amalgam. And if they timed it properly, they'll be able to get those back. Which they did. Just going to make sure not to do it in the actual end step, otherwise it's too late. And they will only come back in the next end step. So if they can kill Atraxa, we could be in trouble. Although this deck is not known for having a ton of interaction. Ooh, Soaring City. Yeah, that does work. But also means we get to replay Atraxa next turn. Probably lose a few Planeswalkers in the process. So we're losing Nissa either way. And then I can block priced Amalgam to keep Tamiya around. Six loyalty, just double checking here. Yeah, that should work. And before damage, grow spiral. So he can still activate Tamiyo. Plain White Celebration will keep. Could have also tried to cast a Leyline Binding. Not sure if that gives us the opportunity to then play free Atraxa. I guess it does if we respond to the Greatness trigger, so yeah, that's a missed opportunity. Hit for three. So don't quite have the loyalty to get back Extinction Event, which would otherwise be quite effective, but we can maybe plus to dig for it. Did not find one. And then now can cultivate to keep developing our mana. And then we can still leyline binding at instant speed to maybe protect Tamiyo. Sure. And then the binding will set up a free Atraxa next turn as well. Jace, yeah, that's a good one. Still probably milling themselves as opposed to us. That happens. So I think now the plan is to hopefully find an extinction event with Atraxa or get it back with Tamiyo. And just need to survive one attack. Opponent's got five cards remaining. Can potentially just win by milling. Happily ever after could maybe be a win condition, forcing each player to draw. So, two amalgams going after Tamiyo. The rest goes face. So yeah, I can block and Leyline Binding to save Tamiyo. And then Amalgam comes back, but we can still potentially exile those. There's still gonna be Narcomiba Spirits and Haunted Dead to worry about. But uh, we'll see here what Atraxa finds. Extinction events, Nissa Binding. So a lot of great options. I 
Okay. Can I play Nissa, Extinction Events, and then still have Binding available? That's pretty good. Or maybe even Portable Hole for Narcomoeba. Could also get back a Basic Land so I don't have to take two damage. Could also just Extinction Event on both Odd and Even to wipe the entire board. It's an interesting choice. Maybe just double Extinction Event is the safest move. And then next turn we can try and take over with Nyssa. If they have another Creeping Chill, we could be dead. Did they cast all of them already? They did, so Creeping Chill's not a concern. And there's one final Narcomoeba. Can they find two more damage somewhere? Three cards remaining. Jace could try and mill us for 15. Still have a few cards left. So we might see them bring back Haunted Dead to make a Spirit Token end of turn. Or just hard cast one. Okay, so we have Tamiyo on top, that's fine. And then... If we get back Atraxa with time, you will be able to put it in play for free next turn. In the meantime, we have to deal with what's in play, which could be Tamiyo Extinction Events on even, but then we still need to deal with the Amalgam. So Plain White Celebration could be the safer move here. Wouldn't be able to play Nissa and Plain White, or can we? I guess I can. Yeah, let's say we play Nissa. And then untap forests. The land fights for us. May as well attack for three. And then plane wide. Getting some life for sure. Getting Atraxa back. Can just gain 12. To play it safe or make a citizen to maybe still set up the alternate win condition. Okay. Pass it back. So looking at our hat flavor after just needs a bit more life to actually win the game with it. Opponent's got two cards remaining, so it's probably gonna come down to decking. Five, six, seven, down to three. Should be safe given that all the creeping chills are gone. So no blocks. We're at three. Get our free Atraxa. And the air opponent concedes, and other Atraxa is going to be too much for them to handle. Could potentially win with Haplaver after by returning Plain White Celebration with Tamiya and gaining some more life back. And then we could also maybe force the opponent to draw from an empty library with her enchantment, which is not the intended use, but also kind of counts as an alternate twin condition, I guess. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is lacking blue for Gross Parrel, although Cultivate can help, and then Extinction Events to catch back up. I'll give it a shot. So I'll take any land here, so we can cast a Cultivate on three. Breeding Pool was probably one of our best draws. Opponent Asper colors Prophetic Prism, so maybe an artifact to deck. Portable Hole could exile Prism, but doesn't seem like the highest priority target. So we'll get additional green mana for Nyssa. Probably just double green at this point. And 
An extra neck and Tamiyo get back cultivate potentially. Maybe I should portable whole prophetic prism. All right, thought seize before we could play Tamiyo, which otherwise prevents discard effects from taking place. Luckily, I have two of them. And then opponent took one anyway. So I'll play Tamiyo. Don't think I portable hole just yet. And then I'm sure we'll get back cultivates to ensure value. And then next turn we can keep ramping towards Atraxa. With of Kaya can finish off Tamiyo. So I guess this is a Doom Foretold deck. I take it. They can make me sacrifice happily ever after, that's fine. Losing both of our Tamios is unfortunate because Tamios is great against Doom Foretold. So, in hindsight, maybe should have just gotten back a second Tamio or plus instead of minusing right away. So, not gonna play any permanents out that would die to Doom Foretold. Can spiral maybe. And pass it back. Bonus sacrifices prophetic prism. And Narset to prevent card draw, although it doesn't stop Atraxa. Finds a guild globe. Sure. And then we'll discard an extinction event. So Doom Foretold is gone. And uh, probably time to uh, land an Atraxa. I'm sure opponents got plenty of removal. Mortify. Still get to trigger Atraxa. Could just get another Leyline Binding. Grow Spirals are instants. And then I can get a land to cast a Grow Spiral in the opponent's turn to play around Narset. And just get another Hapleaver after. More card draw doesn't hurt. And pass. So our opponent doesn't know about our second Atraxa. Hopefully they don't find a Thought Seize here. Ooh, it's gonna be a Demonic Pact, so that's their win condition. We can Binding that at least. And a Thought sees that's too bad. Okay. So goodbye Atraxa. And then we're hoping to find another Taimyo. Actually takes Binding, so they want to protect their Demonic Pact, I guess. Although we're pretty likely to find more with Atraxa. Plain White Celebration means we're actually not too far from an alternate win condition with Hapleaver after. So let's see here. If I play Atraxa, could still find a white source and play Binding potentially. Found Binding and an untapped white source, another Atraxa. Nissa, Portable Hole. Exile Demonic Pack before they get a chance to trigger it. And then probably don't have many basics left for Cultivates. Portable Hole can go. And then next run we're looking at maybe a Nissa before casting Happily Ever After and maybe Plain White Celebration eventually. Mortify kills Atraxa. Could have also destroyed the Leyline Binding. And a guild globe to draw. Portable hole can exile the knights, and that also protects us against another Doom Foretold potentially. But yeah, step one is going to be to play Nissa and uh, keep White Man available. Hmm. 
may not want to untap my white mana, since if they kill it I lose another white source, which could be bad. But uh can certainly portable hold the knight. And then it may be time for a plain white celebration. Finish off Narset. They might have a fatal push. Fair enough. That works. So plain wide. Getting back Tamio. Can make a citizen just to have it in play for Hempley of Rafter. And then maybe return another Atraxa. And start gaining some life to get back up to 20. So Tamio, Atraxa. And that should be good for now. So yeah, getting another time you play is going to be the priority. Is this a Dance of Demands? Yep. Yeah. X equals 4. Get back all those permanents. Doom Foretold Triggers. Sacrifice Portable Hole. Okay, so step 1 is going to be probably Tamio. Protect against Sacrifice Effects. Tamio can get back all sorts of goodies, including plain wide. Can proliferate with it and gain some life. So Nissa ultimate is minus eight. So if I proliferate three times, I can ultimate and still have a Nissa out and gain four. So let's minus eight. Get all our forests, and our opponent concedes, unfortunately. Now we would have had a ton of mana available, and then we are pretty close to winning with Happily Ever After, since we're above 20 life now. We've got our citizen, that's all five colors, so should have just been able to Happily Ever After here, and then hopefully win next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems promising. Can set up a turn 2, Leyline Binding, turn 3, Cultivate. Ramping into Anissa. Could be up against an Angel's deck, as we see a Bishop of Wings. Okay, can a portable hole here. And then Binding can maybe exile a 3 mana Angel. Flying creatures can be good against Nissa since they can still fly over to pressure our Planeswalker. Righteous Valkyrie is certainly scary. So I could go Binding, play another tap land instead of Cultivate. Although if I Cultivate now, next turn I can play Nissa and still Binding by untapping a Forest slash Plains, which I guess we don't have in play since we only have the Zagoth Triumph. So given that we don't have Sparrow's Headquarters, maybe Binding is still better. And then next turn we'll Cultivate. Main phase company. Hoping they find a 2 mana creature we can portable hole. Jada counts. So, cultivate and portable hole. And then we're hoping to find an Atraxa here. Do I need an extra non forest? Don't think so. Speaker of Heavens is fine. And perhaps another collected company in hand. So you can play Nissa, untap Trium, and still cast a Grow Spiral. Or I can just play Forest, I guess, and that also works. And then I'll untap the Forest as well. Do I want to attack with it? Could be a bad idea if our opponent has a collected company left over here. I'm just gonna pass. Could have also gone for Spiral first 
in case we drew into another portable hole and I needed to cast it by untapping planes. Janna, so... They could activate Resplendent Angel using the uh, Nykthos here and take out Nyssa. Making an angel in the process. So we're certainly in trouble. Extinction event on odd would be decent. Do I want to play another Nyssa? It's kind of a distraction here. It's not actually going to survive for long. So I might be better off just going for a Growth Spiral. Okay, found our binding, but it might be too late here. Combining the 6-6, six, six, but then Resplendent keeps making more tokens. Would allow me to attack with a forest, but I think we just uh, pass. And then hope they pump Resplendent again, and then we can binding it. Alright, so at least we wasted their mana. And yeah, Troxa could still maybe stabilize us. Extinction events on even. It gets rid of Jada and the token, but Speaker could still be a threat. Another binding. Probably has to go for the token now. So play Nissa. Keeping planes untapped. Could just exile the token now so we can actually start pressuring the opponent's life total. It's probably fine. So now speaker's less of a concern. Opponent might have another Jada in hand that they don't want to play out. So yeah, Atraxa is definitely the card we need here. Time you could dig for Atraxa. Ooh, Busechu getting back Righteous Valkyrie. That's a good one too. At least we have a few lands we can search up. At this point, probably fine to get Headquarters. Even though we could keep the tri lands to cycle. And a Resplendence. Gonna gain five and make a token end of turn. And another Jada just to put the pedal to the metal here, like we suspected. And make a token with Speaker. Alright, one top deck left to try and stabilize. Spiral has a redraw. Another redraw. The suspense is killing me. I play the rafter. Okay. And just a land. Alright, I think we're dead. Yes. Opponent even triggers Respondent Angel thanks to her own happily ever after. Bit of a nombo. So yeah, never did find our Atraxa to really take over here. And an all-out attack will do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Portable hole as early interaction, extinction event to protect our planeswalkers. Up against the blue green, make that teamer energy. Okay, portable hole can be cast after we grow spiral here. It's gonna cost me some life.
Could have also waited to use portable hull on like a puzzle knot, which can generate quite a bit of energy if her opponent can sacrifice it. But Servant also accelerates their mana, so it seems worth taking. Okay, so time for Tamiyo. Even though I don't have the guaranteed Nissan next turn. Can plus name Atraxa, probably. I think you will find my Couple basics in the graveyard, so we can return, let's say, a forest with Tamiyo next turn. And then still play Nissa. And then by untapping headquarters, I can still binding for two mana. Opponent planning to sacrifice Puzzle Knot, most likely. And binding is going to be very important to exile an Aetherworks Marvel, which is what the opponent's working towards. Valakut Awakening to dig for Marvel. If they have an Aether Hub, they can still get up to 6 energy next turn and activate it. Another Puzzle Knot instead. No need to binding anything. Alright, we top decked Atraxa, perfect. So play Atraxa and then wait and see what we want to do with our Planeswalkers. For now, Happily Ever After seems good. Can grab a Cultivate, another Tamiyo, untapped land, grow spiral. Nissa untaps Breeding Pool, maybe. So I can still grow spiral. And then Tamiyo could plus naming Plain White Celebration, which is what we'll eventually need to win with Happily Ever After. And we found it. Okay, let's uh, empty our hand a little bit. Still want to potentially keep up Leyline Binding, although if our opponent has an Aetherworks Marvel, they'll be able to cast it regardless. But we could maybe exile, let's say, an Emra Cool that the opponent puts in play before taking our extra turn. So I think I will keep up white. So let's just grow Spiral. And then I don't think I've played a land yet, so we can still... Cast the Cultivate too if we want to. Okay, I think that's gonna be it for now. Triumph can go. And there's a Marvel, so opponent gets to spin the wheel before we get a chance to Binding. And we'll see what they hit. It's gonna be Genesis Ultimatum, that's scary. Alright, just a bunch of energy and lands. It's not too bad. Back up to 5 energy. Don't think I need to Binding anything. Even though I could go after the opponent's Aetherworks Marvel. They may have drawn another one in the meantime. Okay, a tune. So they definitely have the energy to spin the wheel now. So maybe I still exile Marvel. Okay, so we're going to try and set up our alternate win here with Happily Ever After and Plain White Celebration. And then I could also try and ultimate Nissa. So let's plane wide. And then proliferate at least once. Gain, let's say, four life, make two citizens for insurance. And then we also get to proliferate onto our land so they can attack past Rogue Refiner. Ultimate Nissa, maybe after making. Some extra mana. I can help you no Get our remaining forests. For those who are worthy. Okay, 
Okay. And then... Let's see here. Play back up Nissa. Animate one of our lanes. Attack. Play High Play Rafter. Could have also minus Tamyo to get another Leyline Binding and then cast it after attacking to remove the Rogue Refiner. But then we risk winning the game without our Happily Ever After, which is not what we're here for. Alright, so all conditions are met. Might still be safer to get a Leyline Binding for interaction. And pass it back. So yeah, all boxes are checked. Harness Lightning, take out one of our citizens. Okay, I guess we might have to celebration again. Alright, never mind, opponent just making energy with a Lightning. And to one with a Multiverse. Okay, that is scary. Do they have an Emrakul in hand here? Ulamog could exile or happily ever after. Yep. Goes for Atraxa. And Binding get back Marvel, which they can still activate. So they've already cast their free spell for the turn, so I don't think I need to Binding one with the Multiverse in response. Currently we're still winning with happily ever after. So they get to spin the wheel with Marvel. Genesis Ultimatum again. Alright, what do they hit? At least if they put an Emrakul in play with Ultimatum, they don't get the extra ability. Same with Ulamog, just put in play and not cast, so it doesn't exile anything. Opponents go to Karn that they can minus. But uh, yeah, currently they would still die to Happily Ever After. They may be able to get like a Ratchet Bomb effect to kill all my tokens, which would get rid of my citizens. So maybe I should have binding the Karn in response to the energy triggers. Karn minuses. I will not lose another friend. And hopefully our opponent lets us untap to win with our alternate win condition. There's another Marvel. Makes sense. Karn to get the fourth Marvel out of the sideboard. And our opponent explodes. All right. Don't get to quite untap with Happily Ever After, but it's not like much would have happened. We just untap and then Trigger goes on the stack and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is not amazing. Missing some ramp for sure. But uh, assuming we can hit a third land, can Happily Ever After, hit our fourth land. And then we're able to cast our Extinction event. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. It's just a double seven drop that's going to take a while to get to. Turn one Eidolon, so an enchantment deck. Okay, good target for a portable hole. Opponent's got a pretty painful mana base to play a light pause. So hoping to hit a land for extinction events. Gonna have to wait two turns to set it up now, maybe. And Light Pass can certainly kill in a hurry. The rest as well takes our extinction events. Nope, goes for celebration. That's interesting. Is there another discard spell, perhaps? There is. And an enchantment as well, yep. So they can start beating down pretty hard. Probably goes for Ethereal Armor. Or maybe a way to protect Light Paws, Kaya's Ghost Form. Yep. Cultivate was a good draw. And then... Already have blue, so just get as much green as possible for Nissa. Okay, two lands away from Atraxa, which can maybe still stabilize us 
if her opponent doesn't draw too many enchantments in the meantime. Ouch, Rune of Sustenance can get a All That Glitters, which is gonna hit incredibly hard. Yep, so 9 power. Leyline Binding was a good draw. Cast it now. Even their opponent gets Light Paws back, all the enchantments will fall off. So that buys us more time. So get back Mogus' favor. And probably go for Ethereal Armor now. Yep, so his for 7 total if they want to. Or they can keep Skrelv back to protect a Light Paws. Found another Binding. So yeah, had they attacked with Skrelv we could have uh, targeted Light Paws. So now we'll have to Binding the Mogus' favor itself to shrink down Light Paws, which they cannot protect with Skrelv. Still dead to any other aura. So we're at one. And a SRAM. So we can cast Atraxa, but now of course our opponent can use Skrelv to attack past it. So that's the other useful mode it has. So we should still be dead. Portable Hole would have been good. Nissa, Celebration. And a Spiral. So yeah, some good disruption with double duress early, taking away that extinction event. Griff's Boon for flying. But at the end of the day, it's Skrelv that really matters, since we can always block with Atraxa. Alright, Glaring Aegis can also tap our Atraxa down, I suppose. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Fine Hand. Some initial ramp, and then some interaction to go with it. And spiral on two, putting a tapped Temple Garden into play. Now we can go for Triome instead. Turn one Elf. So if our opponent plays more one drops, we can Extinction Event. If they play something big, we can Binding it. And does look like Elf Tribal. So I guess Elf Tribal probably keep Extinction Events to name even to get rid of a bunch of tokens and various Lords and Warmaster. So maybe for now it's fine to cultivate. And then we've got all the colors we need. So just get more forests in case of Nissa, maybe. And there's Clan Caller. So yeah, Extinction Event on Even is looking great gonna leave them with the Lenor Elves and then we can still grow Spiral as well. There's Nyssa. Won't quite be able to Nyssa first. So just missing an Atraxa now to top off our curve. Realmocker does need to be taken care of. And a Leaf Crown, so they still have quite a bit of card advantage to work with. So play Nissa. And what we could do is attack with the Forest if they block binding the Visionary. If not, we'll get rid of the Realmocker probably. And then I could still cultivate, keeping Forest back to protect Nissa. Okay, so we are on empty, but our opponent also doesn't have much to work with. Collected Company, I guess that's a good one. 
find double Warmeister so they can go wide once again. Spiral hoping for an Atroxa here. Taimyo's good too. So we're probably gonna dig for Atroxa with Taimyo. Unless we want to get back Extinction Event on even. Certainly an option too. And our opponent has seen enough double extinction event, too much for the elf deck to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable, missing a bit of early ramp. But a uh, sweeper to catch back up, and then time you into Nissa could be a powerful curve. Turn one eye twitch, also good to exile with extinction events so they don't get to learn anything. So our opponent a black green sacrifice deck. Another Taimyo. So with Taimyo we would probably start looking for Atraxa. And then now we're also protected against discard and sacrifice effects. Some decent options in the graveyard if we want to minus Taimyo. Could see a deadly dispute end of turn. Okay. So the plan is to play Nissa next turn. And then if I animate Headquarters I could still grow Spiral, but probably just going to keep on plussing Taimyo on Atraxa. Binding. Pretty good answer to Tamiyo. Okay, now we can still play our Search of Greatness afterwards. Opponent did learn for Fumes, which can exile Planeswalkers as well. So Nissa's not long for this world. We'll also get exiled, so not getting it back with Tamiyo. Another binding instead. So now we can time you minus get back Nissa at least. And Leyline binding is going to be quite useful to set up Atraxa. Seems worth keeping. And then play time you minus on Nissa. And we'll still have binding available. Opponent could finish off Taimyo by activating Hive, since we cannot exile lands with Binding. Skeletal Swarming. Okay, that one we can exile before they get any value. And an Innkeeper. So Tamiya is going to keep on plussing in our quest to find Atraxa. I think you will find my Still nothing. Play Nissa, and then we'll be able to cycle a Triome here still. Animates could go for Swamp, since I'll still have three mana thanks to my forest. And it's less bad if the swamp dies compared to a forest. And then I should probably cycle it now, or we can keep our blockers back for Hive. Okay. Three unknown cards in hand. And a Spider Queen's next. 
So that can make spiders to set up necrotic fumes. Probably gets rid of our Nissa. Don't want extinction event on even since it also exiles our lanes. So in response, we're going to want to cycle Triome. Found another binding. I must seek comfort in the land. Okay, so we can take care of Spider Queen. And then, yeah, just going to keep on plussing for a Trax, I think. There we go. Found it. So next turn I'll be able to play it for free thanks to In Search of Greatness with Binding in play. So for now I can cultivate and keep up a Leyline Binding. Alright, and then we just gotta set up our Happily Ever After. There's Plain White Celebration in the Graveyard. Another binding could get rid of our binding, and then we'll just binding back, but no, it's gonna be Tamyo. Sure. Huh. I question this outcome. And another innkeeper. No need to binding anything. Get our free Atraxa. Yeah, the one of Search of Greatness has been performing quite well. Happily Ever After, back up Atraxa, back up Nyssa, and we'll just grab an untapped forest. Okay, step one, play Nyssa. And the opponent has seen enough, we just need to get our plain white celebration at some point to get all five colors in play for Happily Ever After, and then we'll get the alternate win condition online if her opponent's not dead in the meantime. Alright, so we get to see our Happily Ever After deck in action, and the biggest issue we face is our opponents conceding before we get a chance to actually win with our alternate win condition, even though we got incredibly close in one of the games, just needed to untap and win the game with it. So that's a bit of a bummer, but otherwise the deck seems quite functional. Of course, Atraxa, a very powerful card that will hold a lot of decks together, and no exception here, just ramp into Atraxa and good things will happen. The synergy between Nissa and Plain White Celebration is an old favorite of mine that I also featured in the past in Standard, and it's back here in full force, so that's also very fun getting to ultimate Nissa, get all those different forests in play, and then Tamiyo also seems like a great piece here to get back our Plain White Celebration or Happily Ever After, and then make sure we can find our Atraxa as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.